spark. It is something you hear about a lot in Upland, from those speculating on its value, to those wanting to rent it to build up their nodes, to all of the Q&A sessions with the founders often seem to mention spark. Is it worth buying. Of course, you can collect Spark from treasure chests and in uh, very small quantities from events and such, but everybody knows that the number one way to get Spark is to buy it from the Upix store during Spark Week. And it's not cheap. It's about $450 for one Spark, which is a pretty serious investment for 99% of the players playing this game, including myself. However, you might also have noticed that Spark seems to be disappearing off the shops almost immediately as it appears. Are these people mad? In this video, I'm going to tell you how I personally value Spark, whether I'd recommend buying it at those kind of prices, and my current and future strategies for Spark in Upland. How's it going everybody? This is Radish Head and welcome to another episode of Upland Analysis. This video is sponsored by a group who are very familiar with the value of Spark and that is the House of Spark. I've been familiar with House of Spark for a while but I've only recently uh, gotten familiar with what they actually offer and I love it so much that I'm going to start off this video by actually showing you how House of Spark works because it's so clever and I think it's a fantastic example of what you can use Spark for and the kind of communities that are being built in Upland around Spark. Have a drink every time I say Spark in this video. Right, so I've put the link in the description for House of Spark and here's how it works. You're going to join the Discord and you're going to see a page that looks a lot like this. Let me just maximize it. And I'd always recommend that you start by going to the Let's Start page. It makes sense, right? It'll ask you to claim your role, whether you're interested in staking Spark or, or consuming it. I'm interested in both, so I clicked both of these buttons on the bottom here. And then also I'm going to go on the bot to registration page, which is uh, needed to link your Discord account to your Upland account. So let me give that a go. So let me give that a go. I'm going to type uh, exclamation mark register uh, space radish head. I've already registered at some point. Oh, this is uh, connected to Upland Data, which is a very clever bot. So yes, I do use Upland Data. It's very good at tracking um, how people have uh, staked Spark on different properties. So let's give that a go. <laughs> Somebody's given me a 100. Kenny knows. I know. I know Kenny knows. Right. So I want to rent Spark because, as you know, I've been building up the uh, the Century City node. Shout out to the Century citizens. You know, speaking of Spark, here's a good place to invest it. I think to demonstrate what House of Spark can offer, I'm going to go and build a, uh, a small townhouse on one of my properties over here. I'm going to build a small townhouse on this property here in Century City. So how do I do that? Well, I've already registered on House of Spark. So now I'm gonna go check the price. How much do I need to pay for the service? And this is where one of the unique selling points of House of Spark comes in, because you can make a choice here. So if you want it built quickly and you don't mind your budget so much, you can pay 60 Upix per hour. If you're more budget conscious, you can go for as low as 35 Upix an hour. So I was just running a few numbers in my head and I think 50 Upix per hour is more than fair. That's about 1200 Upix per spark per day, which is, to be honest, a little bit less than the market rate. So House of Sparks uh, spark prices are very competitive considering they handle the whole thing for you. So I'm gonna go and build a small townhouse in Century City for 50, Upix per hour, and that's going to cost me 55882. Right, so with that number in mind, I can now go to stage two, which is deposit. You can either transfer it directly to this user here, take a screenshot for confirmation, and then send that screenshot to one of these two Discord users here. You can do a deposit, so you're basically buying a property off the market for a set price. Um, so instead of having to do the whole burner property thing where you buy it and then sell it back, you actually just buy the property. So you keep the property, but then the, um, you know, you're obviously overpaying for it to reflect the fact that you're actually depositing Upix to pay for your structure. And then finally, you can do it via a burner property. 
Um, it's very clever. You basically type in the deposit command, how much you need to deposit, and then the House of Spark bot will message you with the burner property address and the amount to offer, which is really clever. But I'm going to do it via the first way. I like the UPEX transfer, assuming I've got enough UPEX in my account for more than 60 days. This should work. So let's go back onto the game and I'm going to use the new search player button. There they are. So I'm going to click send UPEX and I want to send them 55,882 UPEX. There we go. So obviously you've got to um, pay the tax. So I'm actually sending uh, 58,000 because Upland likes to take their fee. But uh, here we go. Send Upix. And hopefully it's going to work. There we go. I've transferred the money. Now I probably should have... Um, <laughs> I forgot to uh, take a screenshot for confirmation. Um, whoops. <laughs> uh, but I know that um, these these guys here are very very good so hopefully they'll be able to confirm between each other that I have actually sent the uh, the upix and look at that I don't know if it was all automated or whatever but I just got a, a message saying that Kebig has transferred the upix into my house of spark bank account okay so next step I go back on house of spark this time I'm going on to the bot commands uh, channel on the left here. So to get my building built, I need to type slash request underscore building um, and then the address. Okay, that should work. <laughs> when I'm typing in the price, it needs to be the upex per hour. So that is 50. Right, so let's go back to bot commands. So I'm going to click yes. It's done it. Okay. So it's checked that I've got enough in the account. So while uh, I'm waiting for the bots to do its thing and get my project up and going, which shouldn't take too long, why would you use House of Spark to build your property? Well, first of all, as I showed you, you've got the flexible rates. Also, you don't need to deal with individual stakers. So if you've got a big project, um, you don't need to go on to Discord and start, um, you know, gathering, oh, one spark from this person, one half from this person, two from this person. You just type it into House of Spark, and then uh, the bot sorts it all out for you. The fact that it's all automated is a huge selling point for me. And if you think the House of Spark is the future of Upland, and uh, and the way that we'll be constructing buildings in the future, they also do a share offering. So check this out. If you want to get involved and um, get rewarded for investing in House of Spark, you can go down to the HOS Bank section here, they do share offerings. All of the details are in there. And of course, an obvious thing which I forgot is that I actually have to have started building the structure before the uh, <laughs> before the bottle recognize it as a place that we can um, start sending people to start staking. So uh, let me just do that quick. OK, so it looks like um, I've now officially started constructing my building here in Century City and uh, it looks like it's all gone through the bot so and, and this has just popped up look so address a project and um it's got my name look i got a little lightning bolt <laughs> 50 upex per hour so i'm i'm uh, paying more than all of these other people so other people should surely be uh, jumping on this project to build my townhouse as soon as possible so this is my own personal project page so uh, like all of these um, you can see when people start staking, how much they stake, how long the project has left to complete. So I imagine in like just a few minutes, people are going to start staking onto this and I'm probably going to get some updates. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll give that a quick look, uh, see if people have started staking on my thing. So once again, thank you very much House of Spark for sponsoring this video. I love your service. Um, it's been a fantastic experience showing people how to use it. Um, it's definitely something I'll be using in the future. Right, so on with the rest of the video. Is Spark worth it at the market rate of about $450 per Spark? I was thinking about this and I was running some numbers and long story short, I think the answer is a yes. And it's only going to be increasingly so as time goes on. Let me bring up my calculator. So I have about five Spark and I consistently rented out at about 
1,300 UPEX per spark per day. And uh, if you have less than one full spark, you might not be able to get this amount of money. But uh, if you have one or two spark, you should probably be able to get this amount. It's about what people are willing to pay for it right now. Assuming I keep it leased out all the time, I'm going to multiply that per month. So I'd be earning about 40,000 UPEX per month multiply it by 12 if it was out on the market every single day oh look somebody's already added to my uh, townhouse look <laughs> anyway so one spark is worth about 475,000 upix per year okay that's a big number radish i hear you but what does that mean um well how about i compare it to a property how big would a property have to be in order to get a yield of 475,000 UPEX per year? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You just divide this number by the current yields. So in our case, that's 14.5%. So divide by 0.145. And there's your answer. In order to have a property with a yield big enough to generate the returns that you'd get from leasing out one spark, it would have to have a mint price of 3.3 million UPEX. That's a big house. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, obviously that's a lot of money, but 3.3 million UPEX, that's worth about $330. And I've got to pay $450 for my Spark. But you're forgetting some important things. This is every year. So it's basically for every Spark that you have, you're basically getting the equivalent of minting a 3.2 million UPEX property every year for every spark. That's crazy. Secondly, it's much more flexible than owning a property. I'd rather have the one spark earning me this amount of UPEX rather than having this property generating this amount of revenue. Why? Well, it's so much more flexible because I can lease my spark out, I can up and raise and lower the prices as the market changes, I can use it for my own benefit, I can rent it out and make it part of a node that I'm in. With a property that generates that same amount of yield every day, I'm just stuck with a big house. You know, it's, it's nice to have, but if I want to be able to cash that in, I've got to sell it, I might have to drop the price, you know, people aren't paying this amount of money for properties in Upland that often. Whereas with Spark, it's like, what well, no matter whether you have like 10 Spark or half a Spark, there's always demand for it. And when the Spark exchange comes in, that's going to be even crazier. That's going to push the demand of Spark right up, I think, because it's almost like having a house of Spark in game. You don't have to go on Discord. You can just be like, well, I want to uh, rent, you know, this amount of Spark and it'll come straight to you. Um, that's pretty magnificent. Speaking of House of Spark, look, more people are staking on my townhouse. <laughs> this is great. And as I kind of uh, hinted, the value of Spark isn't dependent on um, property yields staying the same. There's always a risk that the property yields are going to go down over time. Let us say and I don't want to spook anybody here, let's say for argument's sake that the property yields went down to 10%. How much of a property would I have to have in order to gain the same amount of yields from just owning one spark? Let's do the maths. So once again, let's say I'm renting it out for 1,300 a day per spark. Let's just multiply that by 365. I don't know why I did the weird calculation earlier. That's my yearly rate. Now, let's divide it by 0.1. Now, instead of owning a 3.3 million UPEX house, I've got to own a 4.7 million UPEX house in order to get the same amount of revenue that I've just been getting from a Spark. It's so much easier to just buy a Spark and just live off that. It's like owning one Spark is like owning a mega mansion that never seems to go down in value. In fact, it only increases in value because that's my next point is that I think 1,300 UPEX per spark day is probably a bit too low. That's why I'm renting spark right now. 
um, through services such as House of Spark. The value of townhouses like this one that I'm building are only going to increase as time goes on, as more utilities built into the game. We've already heard from the co-founders recently that all manufacturing is going to be powered by Spark and the factories themselves will have R&D investments. So there's going to be mega whales who own factories who are going to be like, well, I want to create the best cars so that everybody buys my cars. Well, how are you going to do that? You need to rent hundreds of spark to pump into your factory to make sure that you always have the competitive edge. There's literally going to be battles to see who can get their hands on the most spark. Price isn't even going to be a question because they know that if they get the most rented, they're going to be able to produce the best cars. They don't care about 1,000. The difference between 1,300 spark a day or 2,000 a day or 3,000 a day, it doesn't matter. They have to be the number one best factory in the game. And I'm telling you, that's why Spark is going off the shelves the second it comes on. I'm buying it. And if you can afford it, you should be too. If you believe in the future of Upland and you're here for at least the next year or two to come, the maths just makes sense. That's all I'm saying. Because, I mean, it goes without saying, if the uh, the market value of Spark doubles from here, then that... Um, completely throws all of these calculations on the head and suddenly it's going to be the equivalent of owning a six million dollar property for every spark that you own and that is how you start making some serious passive income in Upland. That's what spark is all about and that's what the biggest players can see. If you are serious about owning something in Upland that has real value and value that just can't be shaken off because there's only a limited supply of it and it's only going to have more utility as time goes on spark i'm gonna phone i told <laughs> i'm either gonna make people who have spark feel very warm inside or people who don't have it feel like they gotta buy some right now that's not necessarily the uh, the message that i'm trying to get people to take away from this all i'm saying is i've looked at the numbers and the more i think about it the more i realize i need more spark right now if you disagree, then go ahead. But I think the logic makes sense. That was really the analysis for this video then, is I'm very bullish on Spark. I'm very bullish on building up these nodes because that's another reason why it's better to have your value in Spark than in properties in some cases, because it has more value than the sum of its parts almost. So me, renting spark to build up the century city neighborhood it's not just increasing the value of my house here it's increasing the value of all of my other properties because i'm building up a neighborhood and then it's also raising the value of all the other people who are invested in this neighborhood that's how you grow strong communities that's how you start to make areas of the map where people want to invest and it's a bit of a self-fulfilling cycle people will then have to invest quite a lot of money to get into areas like this. And then they'll be like, well, I want to make sure my investment was worth it. Let me um, put my personal residence down here. Let me make a meta venture down here. And I'll support the other people who are building in the same area to raise the value of my house. It's a fascinating bit of economics, quite frankly. And you can see I'm smiling. I am really excited about the future of Upland, partly because of what I want to see happen in the market as, as a result of Spark and all of the utility that's going to come to the game through manufacturing and all of that. I'm going to be following all of that on this channel. If you want to see more of this analysis, please give me a thumbs up and I'd love it if you subscribed. Here are my first YouTube members coming up on the screen right now. Thank you so, so much for joining. If you're interested in becoming a member of my YouTube channel, I've got some fantastic perks. Just click the join button under the video. Thank you once again for House of Spark for sponsoring this video. I hope I've been able to show you all uh, what a fantastic service that is because I, I genuinely wouldn't have spent so much time on it if I didn't think it was actually an actively excellent thing that people can get involved in. That's everything from me for this episode. I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments anything you want to cover in the future and I'll see you next time.